Before we start, I want to thank you for tuning in. If you're enjoying this content and would like to stay up to date with new episodes, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and turn the notifications button on. And if you'd like to support this content, then I would appreciate a review or comment if you're listening to this on a podcast platform. Enjoy. We get this month in Islam and other similar days in other religions as a reminder of our self-discipline. I don't believe that we are meant to be better humans exclusively during those specified religious or spiritual periods. I see this month as a reminder for who we could be as people in hopes that we continue to be those individuals beyond it. Be more mindful, more generous, more connected, and more healthier. Welcome to a new season of the One Day Podcast. I'm your host, Omar Al-Majali, and each week I'm here to discuss powerful concepts around business, mindset, or life, and often share the stage with some of the brightest and most interesting minds of the Middle East to help me do so. Happy to have you here. Enjoy this one. Welcome to uh, the last Ramadan special episode of the season. Habbet akhtam al-shahr al-fadil and to end the Ramadan season with hik. A reflection that sums up this month to me and the meaning of this period and some of the things that I would like to continue practicing beyond this month. Maybe an intro about Ramadan for whoever is not familiar with this holy period. Ramadan is a period that's deeply cherished by Muslims from all over the world and it lasts one month and during that month we are expected to abstain from food, drinks and other bad habits while we fast from sunrise till sunset. But that's definitely not what this month is only about. It's much, much, much more than that. It's a month of self-discipline and a collective societal participation in doing good and being good. And to most Muslims who practice their religion, this month is often perceived as a chance to be centered and to be spiritual and turn a new leaf. And by the way, just like there is Ramadan for Islam, there are other equivalent practices that require fasting or other religions or civilizations, such as Lent in Christianity and the six days of fasting in Judaism. So it's obvious that there is something very powerful that comes with fasting, which is why religion and ancient civilizations have recommended that people do it. For this particular conversation and self-reflection episode, I want to talk about the values and habits that we tend to uphold and practice during this month and that we tend to do less of throughout the year. What I'm about to share is something that I observe in myself and people around me, so I definitely could be generalizing here. But if I look at some of the biggest habits or rituals that I tend to follow during this month and that um, I tend to maybe not do as much uh, uh, after this month, but, but that I am promising myself to continue to do beyond this month, these acts would fall under four main categories. Number one, mindfulness and contemplation. Or خلينا نسميها الروحانيات. Secondly, giving back, or العطاء. Thirdly, social connections, or الروابط الاجتماعية. And lastly, we've got fasting, or اللي هي obviously الصيام. So let's start with mindfulness and contemplation and talk about this category a bit more. During this month, yes, I find myself doing more mindfulness practices such as prayers, self-reflection, istighfar, expressing gratitude, which we talked about in a previous episode. But also I, in Ramadan, I find myself doing more of setting intentions and contemplating on what I wish to bring into my life over the next year and what I wish maybe to be forgiven for or what I would like to forgive myself for um, over the past year. For some reason, these, type, these types of self-reflections are done more intensely during Ramadan than in any other month of the year. And that's something that should be continuous. Setting goals, targets, intentions, prayers, even contemplating one's actions, what we do wrong, where we have messed up, how we can continue to become better humans, or gratitude and being thankful for the little and the big things in, in, in our life. Had al-qalib al-rawhani or, or this mindful bucket or the things that we do should not be exclusive to Ramadan. It should not be a Ramadan thing. It should be something that is active within us throughout the year because only through self-reflection and contemplation do we actually grow. Growth comes from experience, and experiences should be reflected on so we can extract learnings from them. 
And we shouldn't be limiting these mindful practices to a holy month or a particular religious period. One other thing that also falls under the category of mindfulness and contemplation that we need to do more of after Ramadan is self-discipline. A huge theme that is a reflection of this month is practicing self-discipline. Basically, refraining from certain acts, certain sins, such as gossiping, using bad language, anger, sab. يعني لما نكون صايمين بنخاف نسب او بنخاف نشتم او نغلط على الناس عشان بنخاف انه يخرب صيامنا طب ليش هذا الشيء بنركز فيه برمضان او بنركز فيه لما نكون صايمين او بنعمله برمضان بس بعد الافطار او بعد الشهر بننسى عنه ليش ما تكون هاي خصله موجوده فينا بشكل طبيعي وبشكل مستمر the reason why this month is powerful is because it makes us become more mindful beings it makes us more aware and more conscious of our own habits. We tend to police our thoughts, our behaviors, and actions when we fast. And that is the meaning of being mindful. It means adding consciousness to your actions. Why should that stop beyond this month? Habit number two that we tend to do more of this month is giving back, uh, or sadaqa. During this month, our frequency of thinking or giving back to communities and the less privileged is more often than in other months. خلص اول ما يبلش رمضان هيك في سويتش انه انا بدي اعطي بدي اتصدق بدي ازكي قد ما بقدر بس اول ما يخلص الشهر بنصفي عم بنتصدق مره بالشهر او اقل ويمكن عم بحكي عن حالي هذا الشيء صراحه انا لاحظته بحالي وبدي احاول اعدل فيه ليش لازم هذا النوع من العطاء او الصدقه يوقف بعد رمضان why should giving back or these charitable acts decline after the month ends we should not be reminded of the less privileged for this month only and think less of them during the year. برأيي الشخصي أنا بشوف إنه الفقراء والمساكين مسؤولية كل واحد قادر فينا يعطي. هاي ما خاصة بدين أو 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 بعقيدة أو بشهر معين، هاي إنسانية لازم نمارسها بشكل مستمر. فبيجي رمضان ليذكرنا بس ما لازم ننسى عن هاي المواضيع أول ما يخلص رمضان. وفي طرق عدة الواحد بيقدر إنه يساهم فيها بالتسكاي أو بالصدقة بشكل مستمر، ممكن تتكفل يتيم لسنة دراسية كاملة أو ممكن مثلا تتبرع لمنظمة تهتم باللاجئين ويكون التبرع بشكل شهري خلص بنسحب مصاري من من عندك شهريا من غير ما أنت تفكر بالموضوع وبهاي الطريقة بتقدر تكون صدقتك جارية خلال السنة بشكل مستمر من غير ما أنت لازم تفكر بالموضوع I was suggesting a few ways through which we can give back on a regular basis without forgetting that could be in the form of sponsoring an orphan or a less privileged child for a whole educational year this way your donation could be something that would cut across the year um, with, without you having to remember every month another way would be for you to donate to an organization that gives back to refugees such as the United Nations Refugee Agency and with them you'd subscribe to an annual donation plan and they withdraw from your account automatically and seamlessly at the end of every month without you having to be reminded. So the theme of giving back is something that we definitely need to do more of across the year and it shouldn't be something that is exclusive to Ramadan because giving back to people who are in need is a human responsibility that does not stop at a certain month, uh, a religion, race, or location. And not to mention that with giving back, there is significant amount of positive karma. In religion, it's considered to be one of the greatest deeds, but also in the world of energy, if you're spiritual, uh, whatever you give back with good intention comes back in tenfold. The third bucket that we need to maintain after Ramadan, that I need to maintain after Ramadan, maybe I'm speaking for myself here, is social connections. Our rawabat al And that's something that I definitely need to work on. Because here I can admit to myself that I tend to be not so socially active outside of Ramadan, especially during my work weeks. خلاص عندي روتين, عندي شغل, بركز عليهم. I tend to focus on my routine and on my work and less on social interactions during my week. Uh, but during Ramadan, it's kind of opposite. You're constantly being invited or you're inviting people over for iftar. You tend to reach out to people or reconnect with friends or family members whom you don't typically see as much throughout the year. Salat al-Rahim bi Ramadan is something we're doing more in the month of Ramadan. And maybe we don't put all the effort in the topic of this month in the month of So social connections, asking about people, rekindling certain communications with people is definitely something we should be conscious of 
and put more effort towards throughout the year. And it doesn't have to be with everyone. It's not like we should reach out to every contact we have on our phone or Instagram. I'm talking about the connections that you value in life. Lastly, we have fasting, or siyam. There's no doubt that fasting has significant health benefits on our bodies. And that's something that science or mainstream culture has recently caught up to. Now we hear a lot about intermittent fasting and other similar diets, although religion and ancient civilizations have always recommended or asked of people to do it. Some of those fasting benefits include lowering cholesterol in your body. It's been proven over and over again that fasting is positively correlated with lower cholesterol in your body. Lower cholesterol means less risk of suffering from heart disease, a heart attack, or a stroke. Secondly, Ramadan or, or, or long-term fasting acts as an incredible detox for your body. By not eating or drinking throughout the day, your body will be offered the chance to de detoxify uh, your digestive system by essentially eating into the fat reserves to create energy, which in the process would burn away any harmful toxins that might be present in your fat deposits. Thirdly, your body tends to absorb more nutrients during Ramadan because by not eating throughout the day, you'll find that your metabolism becomes more efficient. And because of that, the nutrients you absorb from the food improves. This is actually because of an increase in a hormone called adiponectin, which is produced by a combination of fasting and eating late at night. And this hormone, uh, what it does is it allows your muscles to absorb more nutrients. Lastly, we've got appetite reduction and the reduction in your stomach size. One of the main problems with a lot of the diets that we are surrounded with today is that um, you're on a diet, you lose a lot of weight very quickly, but then you gain it back as quick. And this isn't the case with long-term fasting. Uh, the reduction in food consumed throughout fasting causes your stomach to gradually shrink, meaning you'll need to eat less food to feel full, which is um, a more sustainable way for you to be healthy and be leaner. So fasting is also uh, some, something that I would like to maybe do more of uh, throughout the year. And it's actually something that I've been exploring recently uh, since I sometimes go on certain intermittent fasting um, or just uh, do, do uh, various types of cleanses throughout the year. The conclusion is that during this month or any other spiritual month for any other religion, there are certain expectations from people in terms of habits and actions. And more or less, we tend to abide by those expectations. But for some reason, we go back to old habits as soon as the month is over. This shouldn't be the case. We get this month in Islam and other similar days in other religions as a reminder of our self-discipline. I don't believe that we are meant to be better humans exclusively during those specified religious or spiritual periods. I see this month as a reminder for who we could be as people in hopes that we continue to be those individuals beyond it. Be more mindful, more generous, more connected, and more healthier. This is it for today's episode. Siyam wa ta'a maqbool lil jami'a wa bima inno al Eid al Rabb. Kul sana wa intu salmin. Happy Eid, everyone, and speak to you very soon. Hope you enjoyed this episode and that you were able to pick up a thing or two that could help you on your journey of growth. If you would like to hear more conversations like these, please do subscribe on YouTube or through your preferred podcast platform. You can also follow more content and get in touch with me on Instagram at oneday.thepodcast. Till next time.